Welcome into the PHNX Cardinals podcast presented to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top rated sportsbook. Like and subscribe. Leave us a five star wherever you get your podcast. Johnny Venerable, Bo Brock, Cards Knox, Hard Knox After Dark, Episode 8, Bo. We got retirements. We got another loss. We got a magic trick from David Blau. Uh. And, I, you know, <laughs> other than that, just just a lot of a lot of nice I don't want to call it fluff, but it, it was just, it was a heartwarming episode that ended with yet another defeat. Right. It was their six straight loss for the Arizona Cardinals. They're likely going to end up with a seven straight for the season finale going down a week from today as far as hard knocks goes. But yeah, Corey underscore cards, he says it right. It's the JJ Watt show. We got a lot of JJ Watt this entire episode. It was great. But I think for the true cards, not just the cards casuals out there, not the hard knocks, just viewers out there. We got yeah. me excited. Unlock the beast. We need to figure out how to unlock the beast in Zayvon Collins because he was kind of uh, your B. Your if JJ Watt was your A story, you got Zayvon Collins as your B, and it was it has to have Arizona Cardinals fans excited. Yeah. What's the thing when you make pasta and then you put it the pasta in the thing and you get all the water out? What's that called? Producer Don't, Sean, is it de- dehydrating? Of some no, 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 it's the thing that gets the water out. Then you put it back in in the pot. You put the the parmesan right and the butter on the cardinal. Yeah, you need to strain okay. out. But there's a there's a tool. <laughs> it's, I, I, I don't want to mispronounce it because I. But it's the silver thing with the holes in it, right? We all know mm-hmm. what I'm talking yeah. about here. The cardinals need to do that to the roster, and they need to figure out what's going to remain and what's not going to be on the team next year. And, you know, with all due respect to, you know, Tanner Vallejo and maybe Dennis Gardeck and Marcus Go, we're, we're straining some stuff out. And I think, I think <laughs> Zayvon Collins is one of those pieces next year for a new DC. He's mm-hmm. going to be able to take his tutelage, his learning from JJ Watt. And he's going to be able to say, yeah, Collender. Thank you, producer. John. <laughs> he's going to be able to say, I got better from being around number 99. And while the mm-hmm. grand scheme of things did not help us win a championship, he made an imprint and an impact on young players like number 25. Absolutely. It was like uh, J.J. Watt was saying all the right things about Zayvon Collins, and he doesn't have to say the right things about Zayvon Collins, especially at this stage in his career. But for him to say, you know, he's kind of a goofball, kind of a a dope, but when it comes down to the serious conversations, he pays attention. Like, that's great. He's maintained the green, green dot throughout the season after Isaiah Simmons. Uh, it was stripped of him after his week one performance. And Zayvon Collins has is, is, is maintained it. And, you know, he kind of showed early. It was what was on full display in this episode is what the Arizona Cardinals saw. Still, you know, I talk, I even asked Cliff Kingsbury, you know, what's 100 tackles mean to Zayvon Collins this season? What have you seen from him? You kind of heard the same thing. It was kind of echoing this episode where, you know, they're excited about it, but it still has to play to his measurables. And, and you have to like that nobody's just like content where Zayvon is, but they're excited yeah. as far as what the future could bring. I think what's most promising about Zayvon and Isaiah, because I, I'm with you, like 100 tackles in today's NFL, that's like the the bare minimum for a middle linebacker, right? You ought to be able to tackle and round up a bunch of tackles, even if they're five yards downfield. What Isaiah and Zayvon do well, they can force turnovers, they can intercept passes, they can score touchdowns and bunches, they can get tackles for loss. If I'm a Cardinal fan, that's what I want to build off of, the impact plays, and hopefully the next regime can unlock that. Do you have any concern at all with Zavin? Because he's very, like, book smart. He's immaculate. He was an All-American, academic Mm All-American at Tulsa. But he's had some issues picking up the game and the speed of things, and they talked about read and react tonight. Yeah, He's going to learn have to learn a new defense next year, presumably, with a new defensive (laughs) coordinator and maybe switch – schemes entirely does that concern you at all or do you feel like experience is experience is experience he's got two years now of starting he should be able to pick it up pretty seamlessly 
a little bit of the former with the experience and, and just playing two years at the NFL level or one and a half. I mean, I'm not going to give him a full because it's almost like when, when, even when he was talking, he's like JJ had his rookie year, but that was his true rookie year. JJ struggled right. for the most part, uh, the bulk of his rookie season, and it didn't click until, you know, week 18 in the postseason where he made that big play. JJ said that, Vance Joseph said that, and then JJ was a monster after that. It just clicked yeah. for him. So I think as far as just the game speed, being out there on the field, like he's going to have that experience. And then, yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a learning curve potentially. I, I mean, it's not a hot take to say that he's playing in a different defense next year. I mean, the Cardinals are giving up the most points in the NFL and, you know, heads are going to roll for a four and 13 potential season. Uh, but I think it's, it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's very on par unfortunately and fortunately for the Cardinals with Isaiah Simmons to where in the second year, Zavin's proved that he can play at this level. Now, can he thrive? Can he, can he find that next gear? And, you know, this episode didn't show that, but it shows that he has, he's putting in the work and obviously you get excited about the guy who's kind of behind the scenes. Um, what, what we've seen from Zavin. It's, it's more than I think a lot of the fan base was thinking they were getting from Zavin Collins. One of the things I took away from this episode, Bo, I, you know, a lot of people probably watch for different things. There wasn't a lot to unpack this week. We figure mm -hmm. next week is going to be an emotional episode, potentially with on air or maybe on air firings. We don't know what that's going to look like, but I mean, they could allude to the fact that they're going to lose their coaching staff. Players are going to be gone. That'll be a, a must watch. But tonight it just, it felt for the first time and you're with cliff every day, but Cliff was kind of at peace with his reality. And you look at the effort that they gave on the field. He can be proud of that. He can be proud of the fact that David Blau did not embarrass himself, took a scheme 16 days, was productive in the post game. You know, very much, hey, keep that effort up. We've got one more of these. I feel like Cliff Kingsbury, maybe knowing that this is the end, is kind of at peace with everything. I'm going to put my best resume out there, and I don't have to worry about, you know, all the X factors that are really – out of his control at this point. Yeah. And, and giving a guy like David Blau an opportunity and, and kind of pulling out another magic trick and preparing for a system that he just kind of entered two weeks ago after Kyler Murray's ACL injury and, and kind of having a, a pretty good, a, a decent game. I mean, he had the only touchdown pass for a Cardinals quarterback in the last five weeks. Uh, yeah. I, you, you do kind of get this sense of that because I, I, I don't think that he's, he's sitting, keeping himself up at night, worrying about what his future is and, and he can probably justify uh, why they're where they are, but also feel like he's, he's put in the effort necessary. I, I don't think anybody's questioning, you know, the effort that or time that Kingsbury puts into this because he certainly Never. does. It's just, I think uh, as far as he's a bit just overmatched at this point, especially yeah. what, what he brings to the table as a head coach and, that's not an indictment on him. I think that's just the way things are. And and that's why, you know, the, the organization where it is right now needs just a change in leadership. Because I feel like at the end of this thing, my wife even said this, and she's not, you know, following as closely as I am, but, you know, he could probably just pick up his phone and, and replay the first post-game speech he had for these guys. And it's the same thing you've heard each after each and every one of these losses. There's just, it's the same message and there's nothing that's going to resonate with these guys. It's going to kick him into the gear that's necessary to win. If you missed our earlier show, Bo and I discussed a report that we're going to pull up now from OutKick, the coverage pertaining to Cliff Kingsbury and his future. And maybe this is kind of a little bit why Cliff feels like out of my control. Uh, and the, I'm going to coach these last two weeks loose and free. This is from OutKick, Bo basically highlighting that it's the one it's an open secret at this point that Cliff Kingsbury will likely be fired at the end of the year. He's had disagreements with quarterback Kyler Murray, of course, has been unable to get the team over the top. It's got a little bit of a blurb on Steve Kime, which is funny. Like we, we talk about this, this show before the season and it's like Kime, Cliff, Kyler. We're going to get an inside look at all of them. Kime has been gone and Kyler has been gone for I would say the the most duration of the season they have they have not been featured at all and mm -hmm. then yeah Cliff is around but it really felt like Vance Joseph's show most weeks right they did an in-depth yeah. look on Vance's family outside of that first episode where Cliff you went back to his palace in Paradise Valley 
and we got the MTV Cribs walkthrough. We have not seen much of Cliff Kingsbury behind the scenes. It is just you you look at like the promotional image of the show and like none of those players are featured. None of those people are featured. And yeah. you look at that report and it's just like, is HBO hard knocks just trying to get to the finish line? God bless yeah. them. I know. I certainly see, see that. I mean, it was between the Zavin stuff that I'm sure they've been working on and, and the JJ Watt that you can always kind of lean on. It, it's almost right. become cliche or a parody of itself in a great parody, right? It's, it's right. a solid parody. But uh, and and like the AJ Green stuff was stuff that they shot. I want to say at the beginning of the season, like where he's out there at the flag football thing. That, that they were saying that they were shooting at a long time ago. So that's some old footage that they shot. There was so, green grass and the kids were rolling yeah, around. Yeah, exactly. Like that was a long time ago. That wasn't last week. That wasn't even within the last couple of weeks. So yeah, I I I completely agree with you as far as far as where they are. They see the finish line. They've got one more episode to churn out. And I, I'm sure they're going to be stock full of footage, you know, between now and then. And then what happens? I, I don't know how they finished up last season, if they will feature some of the stuff that happens, you know, after the final whistle blows on the, on the season. You hope they do, because that's going to be some really interesting stuff. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, HBO and if their expectations were probably disappointed based on the fact that they signed up the Cardinals this year. But first, I want to tell you about underdog fantasy. It does fantasy sports differently. Forget the year-long fantasy dulge, the slog with you've got the same sorry-ass team from August until January. Daily fantasy is where it's at. Underdog fantasy is where it's at. Draft your team against five of your friends. The highest-scoring squad for that night wins that cold, hard cash. Draft up to six NBA players with no positional limits. That is absolutely it. Like, will Devin Booker with the hit the higher in points? Will Ben Simmons hit the lower in free throw attempts because he was egregious tonight, leading to Brooklyn's loss? It's hmm. super easy to get started, friends. All you got to do, go to underdogfantasy.com, download the app, sign up with promo code PHNX. Get this, underdog is going to match your first deposit up to $100. So you put into Hundy, bam, get out of Hundy, and you can get to work on Underdog Fantasy. My favorite part about Underdog Fantasy, Bo, is you not only can bet on regular season, but postseason NFL too. So you get you get through the, the the scum and the muck that is the Falcons and the Cardinals and the David Blouse of the world. God love them, right? And you can bet underdog fantasy, Chiefs, Bills, maybe a little Trevor Lawrence and the Jags. Get in on the action today and get your free hundy. It's, uh, it's kind of bittersweet going on that we've got one more episode of Card Knox, HBO with Card Knox with uh, featuring the Arizona Cardinals uh, because it's been nice to just sit down on a Wednesday night, crack open an ice cold four peaks or two or three yep. of them, kilt lifter, wow, pumpkin porter while we were a little bit closer to Halloween. Uh, that's that's what I've enjoyed, an ice cold four peaks beverage. Also, if you like four peaks and you like golf, you got to join us at the PHNX Tea Party presented by Four Peaks, the Dobson Ranch Golf Course. We're renting out the entire driving range. Come hang out with us, PHNX crew, and our fellow diehards, a night of golf, free food, drinks, contests, and prizes, and more. PHNX Suns crew, they're going to be hosting a watch party for the Suns T Wolves. Four Peaks is going to be out there providing beer samples and swag. Check out the link in the description. Reserve your spot right now. And for our diehards, you'll find your Discord link. Uh, in the Discord for 20% off your tickets, 45 bucks per person. You're going to have a blast. Join us January 13th, a week from Friday at 5.30. It's the PHNX Tea Party presented by Four Peaks. I have a theory that Hard Knocks wants drama, lives for drama, loves drama, but not in-season drama. Because mm -hmm. I, I can't remember uh, a season like the Cardinals for any NFL team with more off-the-field drama. And yet, very little of that has been featured in the show. Uh, I think you go back to Hollywood Brown was arrested for speeding. James Saxon was accused and arrested for battery. Sean mm -hmm. Coogler was accused of groping a woman in Mexico, was relieved of his coaching duties. Steve Kime takes a medical leave of absence. Sean Coogler comes back, denies the allegations. Kyler Murray tears his ACL. So that all happened during the season. I'm sure I'm forgetting some stuff. And yet, very little of that has been featured on Hard Knocks. I think Hard Knocks in season the is Benjamin. more for, yeah, the Eno Benjamin stuff clearly was not featured. <laughs> um, I I think Hard Knocks in season 
want you to believe that it is all about the drama and the off the field. They want a good product on the field. They want to mm -hmm. be previewing a playoff team. They want to show you the rigors of an NFL season and having success in the heart, the heartache, the heartbreak of almost reaching the playoffs or securing a division title or whatever. That has never been the Cardinals this season. And you could say, no, no, we got all the extracurriculars off the field. Why aren't you using that? Because I think we we know and we understand now for if you're going to watch the show in the future, that the team has much more control than I think anybody would have thought. And again, I'm a sucker for the old school summer hard knocks. Those are great. Get a little mm -hmm. bit of uh, you know preseason action. The, the the second, third, fourth stringers treat it like live or die. But in season hard knocks in the future, you may want to pick an organization that's a little bit more, I want to say, stable in route to the postseason. And I love my Cardinals, but man, this is this is your your poster child for everything went wrong and we didn't see half of it. I mean, did you didn't you anticipate though kind of throwing gasoline on the fire this season? Did you anticipate that? Did you just think that the whole thing was going to go ablaze? Like you knew there were going to be some fireworks, right? You knew it was going to be interesting, right? I when, thought the when team you were, was going to be good, so I thought this was going to be fun. Right. But they've and, been, and the play, they've thought, been in the playoff race each of the last two seasons. Right, and you thought that if they were going to be bad, they weren't. They couldn't bottom out possibly like they have, right? I mean, it was nothing what anybody expected, but it happened, right? And um, there were certainly not short on storylines, but there was also NFL films having to be in there on a daily basis and work with these players, these coaches, this organization. Uh, I'm, you know, if if they show everything, you know, are are they going to continue to get access? You know, like they're supposed to. I, I don't know. I mean, I, it, it, there goes into it. I mean, there's a, there's relationships uh, between you know the Hard Knocks crew and and every, 32 NFL teams. Are they going to be able to get that same access next season if they kind of throw this team under the bus for all their dysfunction? You would hope. You know, they would show some of it, and they haven't. They just there, there's been a there's been a lot of things. You just went through most of them that have been covered minimally. They've been kind of almost omitted in some of these circumstances where they were big storylines that we talked about on this podcast on a daily basis. That you, have, If you looked at AZ Central, if you went to Arizona Sports, if you went to anywhere uh, to find your Cardinals news, they were talking about it. But then if you watch the show, it's barely even, it, it, it's barely even covered. So, yeah, it's, it, it's been frustrating uh, from that standpoint. And I think that for probably I, – I, I don't know if we'll ever talk to anybody from Hard Knocks again. I see him out there all the time. Maybe I can talk to him off the record. But sure. it would be interesting to hear, like, has this been the toughest season yet, you know, uh, I, as far as covering a team? I, the Colts were in it until the last week of the season last year. Yeah, I, I they turned their season around. Yeah. They had a lot of winning. Cardinals have just pretty much lost ever since the cameras really went on. Ever the since this thing debuted. secondary to, like, the fluff storylines. And I love J.J. Watt, but that – before I timed it, the first like 10 to 12 minutes were retiring and just kind of fooling around. Mm -hmm. uh, both these comments, I think, are true. Jalen, this is only uh, HBO's second season doing in-season, so they're still experimenting, working out the kinks. But to Edwin's point, in-season hard knocks is built for a winning team, no doubt. That's what HBO thought they were signing up for, and I would push back, is a winning franchise, consistently winning franchise, going to give this kind of access? They would probably think, what's the point? Our brand is big enough. The Colts kind of in a weird spot with with mm -hmm. Wentz last year. Let's Ursa is kind of a weird guy. Let's get the cameras in here and dispel some of that. Or the Cardinals, right? We want to showcase our culture. Look at us. New quarterback contract, GM, head coach. We're we're stable, right? And then literally everything that could go wrong did go wrong. I I mean, like, is uh, who's a stable franchise right now consistently winning? Like is green Bay doing this kind of thing? They don't want Aaron Rodgers in right. front of these cameras every week is like a Pittsburgh with Mike Tomlin setting this up. Just look is the Kansas city chiefs, the Buffalo bills. They're like, we're, we're fine and content with chalking mm -hmm. up W's and division titles and conference championship game appearances. I don't know. It feels, feels like the Cardinals and I'm just speaking, you know, transparent here needed HBO more than HBO needed the Cardinals. Yeah, but then when it came down to it, the Cardinals they they could have put some interesting things out there, and they chose to, right? For for whatever reason, it wasn't shown. And you you can say it's NFL films, or you can say it's whoever. It just never we just never saw the the, the story of the 2022 2023 Cardinals really shown. 
it, it was more like we said this a couple of weeks ago. You wouldn't tell that this team's four and thirteen or going to go four and thirteen. You wouldn't. You couldn't tell who the head coach was. You couldn't tell who the stars of the team were or who the who the stars are supposed to be. It's it's the Vance Joseph JJ Watt show for the most part. The show is designed to show off your culture. Um, I would say good and bad, but we haven't seen the bad. So if you have a good culture, sign up for this. If you don't, then it's it's a lot of what we're getting. Here's what you can get on the Game Time app, by the way. I know Cardinal season, home games, good hell. Take a, take a breath from State Farm Stadium with the Arizona Cardinals until next fall when we revamp that. But check out some Diamondback games coming up here. Spring training's right around the corner. Also, the Suns right now. Look at game time where you can get up to 60% off tickets when you buy them last minute. It's the best way to support us is by buying through the ticket link in the description. I'm a procrastinator, Bo is, concerts, monster trucks, whatever you want to do. It's on game time. We just exited bowl season. Now we're into college basketball, ASU, U of A hoops. If you're down in Tucson with our guy, Mike Luke, check out the game time app. It's going to help you avoid all of that garbage, service fees, extra fees, hidden fees, whatever you get from those third-party vendors. It's not on game time. Check same day. If you're a procrastinator out there and you say, hey, honey, I want to go to a ball game tonight, but I don't have tickets, game time is where you want to go. Something that also could spice up your Hard Knocks viewing experience is our friends over at OG's Brands, of course, Arizona's Cannabis Kitchen. If you're going to have a tough time after watching some PHNX Cardinals, Hard knocks, card knocks, well, pop and OGs, sleep time gummy. It's going to help put you to sleep and keep you asleep. It's a delicious aqua berry flavor. There's something for everyone, indica and sativa. As far as the flavors go, you got their whole tropical selection, watermelon, raspberry, orange. You've got the orange cream sickle. you got the uh, blackberry creams. The creams, can't go with, wrong with any of the creams. There's something for everybody, and it's the best type of gummy to bring in the new year new year in the new year check out og's brands it's going to enhance your your gummy experience your cannabis experience check out all their products online ogsbrands.com that's o-g-e-e-z brands.com you can also find them in your local dispensary look them up on instagram at og's brands and you got to be 21 years or older to dabble um I thought the low point of the season was David Blau doing magic tricks for Cliff Kingsbury, card <laughs> tricks. Uh, I put that and on Kingsbury Twitter. being blown away. Yeah, tongue in cheek, and people were like, "Let them have fun, Johnny. They, they can't be real people. <laughs> They're a monster. They football ear. Yeah, shame on you. Cancel the show. Delete your Twitter. No, um, I to me that looked like Cliff Kingsbury just like, oh, okay, David. Like I brought you. In. Like, can we not do this? Or maybe David was like, hey, hard knocks. You know what? Check this shit out. <laughs> Instant ratings, trick cards, baby. Uh, no, it that was fine. I mean, like, did anything else stand out to you from this show? I love the Zaven stuff with Watt. That was great. Buddy Cop, sign me up. But I mean, Ky Kyler kind of made a brief appearance on crutches. He yeah. looked really small, hugging JJ Watt, and then he immediately JJ's like, a massive I'm person. To you. He is. He's yeah. a big man. Um, can I say something? It's probably gonna we're gonna lose a lot of viewers doing it. Uh, oh it just reinforces. We didn't talk about this on Sunday, but the Arizona Cardinals need to bring back uh, Matt Prater. Matt Prater's been solid. Is he yeah. a bang home a 58 yarder, like right down Very the middle, good. right down the, the seam? I mean, that's that's about it. That's how that's how uneventful this is. <laughs> that's that was what the game was. I mean, they scored one touchdown. It was it was Trey McBride supermanning into the end zone, which is great. The first passing touchdown in five weeks. And then you've got Matt Prater, the rest of the offense. What was he, four for five, kicking field goals in that game? He was a stud. He's great. He, as we talk about people, like we talked about Marco Wilson, we we're excited about Zayvon Collins. We know JJ's Collins, retiring, yeah. right? And then, uh, and then, yeah, you got you got to have that steady kicker. You got Matt Prater. He's yeah. I, is he under contract? I don't know if he signed a two-year deal last year or a one-year contract. We'll have to look. Him, him and Andy Lee are, are steady as they get. And you talked about it before. Jeff Rogers, would he be retained depending on who the next head coach is? He was only retained, I believe, once upon a time because Cliff really didn't have the contacts to put together a staff in its entirety. He was the only carryover from the Wilkes era. I, I'm with you there. You know, outside of that, it just it feels He's like good for next year. He is. He's under contract. You might. No, I'm sorry. Long. No, I'm sorry. He's he's not. He's this is his he's last he's season. Gone. He's got he's a two year deal. Back. He's out of here. He's gone. He's gone. His frosted tips. 
he's uh <laughs> tribal he's, tattoo he's, his tribal tattoos yeah. are taking his talents elsewhere listen mm -hmm. i i everybody thought the same thing sunday great efforts better job making sure you didn't close the deal and the cardinals top four pick is still intact i mean the players don't think like that clearly you would you watch david blau breaking out the huddle at halftime you would have thought that that was the gd super bowl and you've got right. tanner vallejo's in there and dennis gardeck with his hair acting crazy and Cliff yelling, one more stop defense. And, of course, the defense can't get him that stop. <laughs> Cordero Patterson's just ripping through fourth and fifth stringers, ripping Cliff's heart out. And Cliff's like, son of a bitch, we're down to the one-yard line. Which, by the way, we haven't talked about this at all because we don't really care to break down that game. But mm -hmm. why didn't the Cardinals just let them score there? Does anybody ask Cliff Kingsbury? Yeah, we did this? ask. We did okay. ask him. He said, uh, he said he, they knew that the Falcons had no intention of scoring there. That they knew that the, if they'd given them an open lane to the end zone, that we would have mm. seen like a Bryant Westbrook where they just take a knee right at the goal line. Uh, you think that you think that's true? I watched them. They had made some tackles like close to the one yard line. That rookie running back would have stopped at the one. I mean, I I'm sure Arthur Smith, who he would have hope he hopefully would have communicated because. The Falcons know, and we've seen we've seen these uh, these play out poorly before, where guys go in the end zone and give the other team another chance, and it, it yeah. usually plays out poorly. So I think we've seen enough teams make the mistake to where they might have been coached up well enough to to not go into the paint. Watching this team and this roster tonight, Bo, I'm going to give over under how many of these players are going to be on the team next year. Forty percent over or under on the team next year. I mean, they're going to have what thirty unrestricted free agents. Yep. Uh, I mean, but if you're looking gonna at a lot of cuts. They're going to cut a lot of fat. Mm -hmm. uh, I would over forty percent. Yeah, there, there's going to be a huge amount of turnover. No doubt about it. I, I I'll take the, the over on that. Gets, gets yeah. Turned. I think the guys, especially when you have a no. Yeah. New coaching the staff players, right? New front front office. I mean, we saw even Steve Kime when he took over. The Reigns and Bruce Arians came in. I mean, they churn that roster. And I'm mm -hmm. sure we'll see something similar to that. But you do know now, you know, who the players are potentially going forward that you can rely upon that can make an impact. And then you know the guys who are just who are just fellas, right? I mean, they're just guys who who are replaceable at the NFL level. You can find guys that can be better glue guys or guys that can make impacts, maybe not consistently, but enough to win some football games going forward. Yeah, I just feel like Again, David Blaine Blau. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible, but great. All of Vance Joseph's cronies, the guys who have helped teach, you know, the younger players, the defense, goodbye. I, I feel like a lot of the veterans on offense, the offense has the most heavy weighted contracts that need to be removed. We talk about Justin Pugh and Rodney Hudson. I know AJ Green doesn't make a ton of money. He's gone. You got to decide what you want to do with somebody like James Conner. I think he'll be back. Kelvin Beecham's a free agent. Colt McCoy, does he fit what the next coach wants to do? Presumably needing a starter for the first four weeks of the season. I think the, the offense is going to see much more turnover. The defense, to me, has enough young, cheap talent to supplement. Like I feel like if you bring back Byron Murphy, which is not a lock, the secondary set, the foursome in the secondary, you feel good about that. You've got the two rookie outside linebackers. You've got the starters on the inside. The defensive mm -hmm. line hopefully is anchored by a five technique from the University of Georgia, but who knows? David <laughs> Collins, you know, a name I had heard today for the first time in a long time, Rashad Lawrence. Remember Rashad Lawrence? Yeah. The starting nose tackle for this team. That's how much he hasn't played since week six. He got injured in week five. We haven't seen him since. It's, it's crazy how this roster has changed over the course of the season to the part where we're just outright forgetting players. Yeah, I mean, you've got guys like Zach Allen, who I haven't seen in a couple of weeks, who was having his best season as a, as a pro, and he's going to be a free agent. And you've got Byron Murphy, who you've got to make a decision on, who went healthy. He was doing great, locking down wide receiver ones. He gave up 12 yeah. yards and a touchdown to Devontae Adams. He was able to slow down DK Metcalf. He had some great games there, uh, but can't stay healthy, or he couldn't stay healthy this season, and he's going to be a free agent potentially in, in the 2023 offseason. So, no, I think defensively, you're actually, as far as young talent, controllable talent, you know, outside of those guys I just named, you like them, right? Simmons, Zayvon Collins, Buda Baker, Jalen Thompson, Marco Wilson. 
Um, Richard Lawrence had two injuries. He had his shoulder and he had his hand, his hand, he had surgery on that. Um, but yeah, if you can, if you can supplement the front seven, if you can get a legit pass rush specialist in there, you know, maybe a Will Anderson with the third or fourth overall pick out of Bama, you know, that, that defense quickly looks more appealing. Uh, yeah. and then you really have to figure out, you know, offensively, who are the guys going to go forward with? Because they were high priced older veterans that now you have to kind of churn that side of the football and it, it can be exciting, but you know, when your quarterback, you're staring down the potential of him not coming back until, you know, for, you know, until October. And we're not saying first week of October, it could be at any point. Um, you've, you've got to put this thing in place to where it's ready to roll. When Kyler comes back, I want to get your big opinion, a big hot take ahead of next week's fin finale season finale of hard knocks. I want everybody else's hot takes of what we could see in the finale, but first, I want to tell you about my many talented peers at gophnx.com, including our PHNX Cardinals beat reporter, Howard Balzer, who's cranking out free content on the reg. Slam the promo code H-O-W-A-R-D. Become a diehard. Pick up a free lid or shirt. When you become a diehard, get exclusive discounts to upcoming events. Hang out in the member Discord with myself, Bull Brock. Pick up some gear at the PHNX Merchandise Locker. GoPHNX.com is the place to be for anything Valley sports beyond just our cards coverage. Again, Suns is in full gear. Diamondbacks about ready to kick off spring training. Coyotes in full effect. Where are they going to fall in the NHL lottery? All that and more at GoPHNX.com. So you, you want the hot take. What, what's, what are we going to see on Give display? Me, me that, yeah, what do you think could happen? Are we talking like Cliff walking out with his box, like the 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 box yeah. that everybody gets that, when they think they're giving their happen? walking papers? I absolutely. I think. I mean, there could be like the obviously the Hollywood looks and stuff like that. We could get the the scene of him driving off the lot there in, from the facility in Tempe, and leave Shriver, the narrator god, you know, saying you know Cliff Kingsbury drives away from his Cardinals organization one last time. I don't know. I mean, has any coach yeah. ever been fired on a hard knocks, a head coach? We'd have to look, I'm probably not because they've all been preseason right. hard knocks. Yeah. We've only really seen Chad Oak with the dolphins, like get cut because of a alleged domestic incident that went down. Yeah. That was like really the only big thing that's ever happened. I no, I don't think we've ever seen anybody fired because as you know, it's the second one. It, I mean, in, the Colts could have made a move with Frank Reich last year, but they waited till a couple weeks into this season to do it. Uh, Poncho asking, Bo, can you check tomorrow? <laughs> Cliff already packed most of his stuff. Yeah, Bo, go into Cliff's office tomorrow yeah. and start perusing around and say, hey, Cliff, when are you going to start packing up your shit, my man? And How about him checking there? in on his, his ex-girlfriend watching the Texas Tech football? His alma mater oh, that had already fired. <laughs> you didn't notice that? He was, he no, was watching no, no. TV. He was watching TV yeah, in his office, and he had the Texas Tech game on. It's like, ah, oh, Cliffy, huh? Body. Checking in on the X. Don't don't text him. Don't text him. They'll they'll welcome him back with open arms. Uh, hot take: I want a camera inside Bidwell's office on Black Monday. I'm gonna make a yeah. Prediction Fisher right now. Fisher was all or nothing, right? Wasn't that the series that they caught that? So they he got fired on all or nothing. I believe so. Was that their first season of L.A. L.A. Rams. Yeah, I think so. All right. Um, my prediction is we're going to get about 40 minutes of what we just got mm -hmm. fluff and some game footage and some goodbyes with the players and some crying and blah, blah, blah. And then we'll get about four minutes of extracurricular, heavily, heavily viewed, edited and distributed by the team. That's my prediction. I would be shocked if half the episode was it was just Michael Bidwell cleaning shop, right? Sending people out of the building. I would be shocked if we got an interview with Cliff Kingsbury after he has been let go. That would shock me, Vance Joseph, et cetera. I, I think it's going to fall the same because it's, again, they're telling us who they are. This is who they've been all season. Why would they change? I think we're going to see 40 minutes of cut and dry, B-roll, whatever, to five minutes of yeah, we parted ways with Cliff Kingsbury. And that's it. And roll the credits. Here's another one. This is, this is, here's what I predict. Going off of Mike Mayers here, I, I think that David Blaine Blau narrowly escapes death 
playing quarterback behind the Arizona Cardinals patchwork offensive line with that front seven that he's going to face yeah. with the 49ers. It's going to be David Blaine Blau's best magic trick of his career, just escaping that, that whole incident alive. And then he disappears into <laughs> the waiver wire. He disappears into the ether. When Jeff Ireland and Sean Payton cut his ass in two weeks, <laughs> goodbye, David. Enjoy, enjoy the offseason. I think the Rock's hiring for XFL <laughs> rosters right now. No, he's, he was good. He deserves a, He's going to be a camp arm for Cliff when he goes to New England <laughs> next year. God damn. Nick Bosa trying to lock up uh, Defensive Player of the Year. God help Josh Jones on the left side. But we're going to have a full preview of Cardinals at Niners, or maybe we won't. Maybe we'll talk about some other stuff that's prevalent Friday on PHNX Cardinals Live. Myself, Bo Brock, the great Frank Sanders in studio. Keep it locked here on PHNX Sports. Hit that little subscribe button and then double down. <laughs> hit that bell to get reminded of when myself, my handsome co-host here, go live because you do not know when news is going to break unless it's with PHNX and PHNX Cardinals. For Bull Brock, I'm Johnny Venerable. We'll see you again in the coming days. Be well, everybody.